Hey guys, today we're going over the easiest Frost DK guide to get to 2400 plus in solo shuffles. I was the 5th Frost DK to get above 2400 on the NA servers using this very strategy. Frost Death Knights are capable of huge bursts and sustained pressure through the likes of Pillar of Frost and Chill Streak. The AoE pressure it can create can be so vast that off targets can fall to the damage. Their damage has almost zero ramp up time, allowing you to control your burst windows very well. As a Frost DK, you come with incredible crowd control mechanics through your snares, grips, and stuns, allowing teammates to freely set up their goes. Here's a quick look through my talents I have these chosen to make the class as easy as possible. It's based around staying as aggressive as possible while relying on Death Knight's very strong defenses like Wool of Necropolis and Spell Warden that we have on over here. With this build you have extremely heavy snares with double chains of ice and your death and decay reducing speed by 90% combined with bitter chill which refreshes the duration of your chains of ice as well as puts an 8% hasty buff up which hurts a lot right now since it's season 1 and people have very low stats. That's usually 100% of their haste that they have. This build also offers you a really strong defensive cooldown Lichborn. You take 15% reduced physical and magical damage for 12 seconds, which is really nice because Death Knight struggle against physical damage right now. I also prefer it over anti-magic zone because you don't need to rely on teammates standing in it or anything like that. And this is a little bit more of a selfish choice where you can move around the map and have a little bit of a better defense in my opinion. This build also offers you Death's Echo, which is going to be a great tool for CCing the healer as well as staying alive longer with Death's Advance and Death's and Decay. Alright, let's look over the Frost portion of the talent tree. Now the important thing to be looking at with this Frost side is Enduring Strength with Obliteration. The important thing with this build is for you to be getting as many Killing Machine procs as possible during your pillar of frost and the way you're able to do that is by using a frost strike or howling blast when you get a rhyme proc during pillar of frost and that will always give you a killing machine proc and due to the talent frost reaper your killing machine procs will make your obliterate not only crit but be magic damage which is going to increase its damage dramatically you will see humongous obliterates and if you combine that with the talent cleaving strikes with your death and decay and your death and decay slowing people your obliterate will always hit two targets that as long as you're standing within your death and decay another thing to be looking at with this talent tree is your razor ice stacks as you're stacking razor ice with your cast of howling blasts with rhyme procs and then also your offhand weapon that's going to be enchanted with Rune of Razor Ice, which will also give you more Razor Ice procs even faster. Your Shattering Blade are going to consume those Razor Ice procs to make your next Frost Strike do 100% more damage, and this is actually crucial because during your burst, or even after your burst with Enduring Strength, you're going to be doing Frost Strikes of up to 125,000. I've done humongous Frost Strikes with this build so far, even outside of Pillar of Frost due to enduring strength. The best part about this build is maybe going to be even enduring strength because it's going to make your pillar of frost last so much longer. Every obliterate that crits during it is going to increase your enduring strength's duration as well. So it's going to be like your pillar of frost lasts twice as long if you have a lot of uptime on your target during your burst. Another thing to look at with this build is chill streak with enduring chill what this does is it allows your chill streak to hit from a much greater distance which is extremely important because chill streak has a really small range to it not only that but it makes your chill streak have a 20 percent chance per bounce to bounce an extra time and for me it usually bounces around 12 times instead of nine times which is going to be around a 60,000 damage increase Alright, now that we've gone over both talent trees, we're going to be looking at your PvP talents. You're almost always going to be going these three PvP talents. Bitter Chill, 
Necrotic Aura, and Spell Warden. Spell Warden's going to be your best defensive ability as long as there's any magic damage on the other team. So it's not going to be good when you're going against comps like Hunter and Warrior, but it's going to be extremely good when you're going against Shadow Priest and Death Knight. Necrotic Aura is going to be a no-brainer. It's just an 8% damage boost to you and your teammates all the time for any magic damage. And since you have Frost Reaper, your Obliterate is going to be magic damage, and then your Frost Strike is also magic damage. So you're going to be able to do huge hits with Necrotic Aura. One of the best parts about Bitter Chill is it allows you to be more aggressive instead of having to do more globals on crowd control. Whenever you have Bitter Chill, it allows you to keep your Chains of Ice up on the target that you have it on almost indefinitely as long as you're not crowd controlled too long or they get some kind of freedom or a priest uses Fade or something like that. This is extremely annoying for classes like Death Knights and also extremely annoying for classes like Shadow Priest and Ellie Shaman. This will be a huge detriment to have on them the whole time, reducing their haste by 8% and their, their movement speed by 70%. If you combine Spell Warden and Bitter Chill, you can reduce a caster's speed over 20%, which is extremely annoying. The only times I'm not using Bitter Chill, Necrotic Aura, and Spell Warden is if I'm versing a team that has heavy physical and no magic at all. So if I'm versing a warrior and a hunter, what I'll do is use Delirium. One of the reasons why I like Delirium instead of Spell Warden, since, you know, obviously Spell Warden won't do anything, is it will make their team even more snared while you're playing against them. If you have a warrior snared the whole time with Chains of Ice and Bitter Chill and you use Delirium, it will make his charge take so long to come back that he'll be off balance the whole game, not used to how it plays. And if you're not feeling like using Delirium, because maybe they're not such a mobile team that you're worried about, you can also use Death Chill, which makes your Remorseless Winner and your Chains of Ice also able to root the target to the ground. These are really good options. Dead of Winter is also really nice. It turns your Remorseless Winter into an AoE stun, which is super nice when your team is lacking some kind of AoE stun effect. Alright, now when it comes to gearing up in Dragonflight, World of Warcraft actually made it extremely fast and simple, maybe the fastest it's ever been before to get fully geared in PvP. What you're going to need to do first is get full honor gear from Battlegrounds. I would suggest just doing epics. It's really quick. It takes around 5 hours to get full 411 PvP gear. What you do after that is you try to max out how much conquest you can get from the season's maximum from doing either solo shuffles, ranked battlegrounds, or arenas. Buy as much gear from here as you can. That's 424 item level. And then there's two different systems that you can do from here. You can go to this guy that's next to the PvP trainer in Thaldrassus, which is right over here in Valdraken, the main city now that everyone goes to. It's right over here. Right here next to the Obsidian Enclave. You can accept a quest once per week to get 8 Trophies of Strife. And if you combine your Trophies of Strife with an item that you can buy with bloody tokens from this vendor right here, you can actually turn these pieces of gear into a higher item level, 421 pieces of gear. So you can get a lot of gear very quick in these seasons. You can get multiple pieces a week actually, which is really nice. You'll be fully geared in a matter of just like four weeks basically. This is probably the best that World of Warcraft has ever been towards PvP gearing. And on top of these trophies of strife, we're gonna be going over here to the crafting table in Dragonflight, which now offers you the ability to put in an order and actually get a piece of gear crafted by another player without actually having to interact with them. It just does it automatically through this trading table. And there's two pieces of gear that you're going to be looking for. There's going to be the helmet. And the reason why you're going to want to grab this helmet is it puts up a really nasty damage over time effect whenever you're being targeted by players or even just getting cleaved by players. 
and then the second piece of gear that you're going to be looking at are the boots and the reason why is they have a five percent reduction in crowd control and that doesn't sound like a lot but that is really nice to have because it's also 424 item level so you're going to be fully geared even quicker with the trophies of strife and your conquest going up by 550 maximum per week all this is going to add together to you gearing up extremely fast this season and the way for you to craft this gear is you need to finish the Thaldrasis Zones quest line and you'll start to get an item called Sparks of Ingenuity. And with these Sparks of Ingenuity, you use them to put in these crafting orders to get these really awesome pieces of gear. Now for Frost DK specifically, I happen to be running Adaptation and I'm using the On Use badge so I can do as much damage during my Pillar of Frost go as possible and I actually have it all macroed in together right here. This is just my boom macro. All this is castable in the same global as the only thing that takes a global is going to be your pillar of frost. You can use pillar of frost, the power of rune weapon, my orc racial, the one minute on use and all this makes for an extremely powerful go. As you can see I don't even have unholy rune weapon on my bar right now i'm just using it inside the macro for a really strong go one of the reasons i'll use medallion over adapt is if the team has a lot of disarms and they're really annoying during my pillar of frost if you're ever versing a warrior that knows what he's doing and he ever hears your pillar of frost activate he will immediately disarm you knowing that you're going to be doing huge bursts and he's going to completely cripple your character god damn disarm look how op disarm is man my entire freaking burst is just gone other than that i really don't feel the need to run trinket too much as a death knight since you have so many different ways to get out of cc anyway I just use Adapt, it's just another thing I don't need to think about, it's just passive. When it comes to Frost DK's stat priority, you're always going to be looking for Strength first, and then Mastery, and then Versatility. Haste is okay to have, but it's not going to be more damage than Mastery this season by a decent amount. Mastery is going to be a lot more damage. The only thing Haste is going to help you is with that fluidity a little bit, making it a little bit more smooth to use your rotation without waiting too long. You're going to want almost zero crit, and the reason why is with the build, we're already getting killing machine procs, which will guarantee that your obliterate's going to critical strike anyway. So this is pretty much a useless stat. You want to stack as much mastery and versatility as possible. And for your enchants and gems, I like to go the gem that gives you 70 mastery and 33 versatility. For my cloak, I went regenerative leech. Leech doesn't seem like it's going to be a lot with it only being 3%, but I actually heal a decent amount with leech by the end of it anyway. It's usually around 10% of my healing, which is like... For this one solo shuffle, it did 579,000 healing, which is pretty nice. Over the six rounds, of course. Then for the chest piece, we're going to be looking at sustained strength. For my bracers, we got an extra 200 leech. For my pants, we got frosted armor kit. For my boots, we got watcher's loam. And for both my rings, I just put 82 plus mastery to increase my damage of all my frost but even further, which counts for obliterate too, since it's going to be frost damage during your obliterate killing machine procs. And for your weapons, you're going to want Rune of Fallen Crusader and Rune of Razor Ice. And the reason why you want Rune of Razor Ice is also because of Avalanche and Shattering Blade. These are going to help you stack Rune of Razor Ice extremely fast so that a lot of your Frost Strikes are going to be 100% additional damage, which is huge damage. Sometimes you're doing 100k plus Frost Strikes, and this actually happens very often. Sometimes I'm getting 5 stacks of Razor Ice every like 8 seconds on the target, which is huge, huge extra burst damage. If you get a Killing Machine proc, and you hit 90k 
and then you get a Shattering Blade proc, or, well not a proc, but if you get a Shattering Blade consumption, and you use all your Razor Eye stacks, your Frost Strike can just do another 100k, it's just really crazy the damage back to back. Alright, now let's go over some of your normal rotation while you're using Frost DK in PvP. You're going to want to start off by applying your diseases to the enemy, then you're going to use Chains of Ice, then you're going to use Remorseless Winter and put down a Death and Decay. Now you're going to want to use your runes on Obliterate and use your runic power on Frost Strike. Now whenever you get a, a Rhyme proc, you're going to want to prioritize this unless you have a Killing Machine proc. You'll always use your Killing Machine procs first. And then what you do from here is you pretty much just use all your runes on Obliterate, then use some Frost Strikes, and what's going to be awesome about using Frost Strike is it also increases the duration of your Chains of Ice. As you can see here, I'm pretty much using Frost Strike, Obliterate, Frost Strike, Obliterate, putting down my Death and Decay, using Remorseless Winter off cooldown, Frost Strike, Obliterate, using the Howling Blast from the Rhyme proc, using my killing machine proc, using my howling blast proc, frost strike to increase the duration of my chains of ice, use some remorseless winter, put down my death and decay again, and death and decay is going to be really awesome during your combination because it is a huge slow, so you're going to be doing a lot of damage and a lot of snare with that. That's pretty much what it comes to when you're just doing your normal rotation, this is what your damage breakdown may look like. One of the reasons why you see Obliterate doing such little damage is it's because outside of your cooldowns it really does not do much. Your Frost Strike actually does a decent amount more just because of the build that you're going to be running. With it increasing every time you have 5 stacks of Razor Ice on the target, which happens probably every 8 seconds if you're on top of the target. Now if we're talking about your Burst Rotation, you're going to want to do this very efficiently. Pillar of Frost does not last long, but if you use the globals well, you could do tremendous damage during it. The burst is a frost decay. You're going to want to start off with your raise dead, and then you're going to want to activate your abomination limb. Then you're going to want to run in, use howling blast, put down your death and decay, use your pillar of frost macro, with your unholy rune weapon then use chill streak at the same time and then every time you have a killing machine proc you're going to want to always use your obliterate first and then if you don't have a killing machine proc what you're going to do is use your frost strike or howling blast to proc another one and you're just going to keep basically doing that over and over again one of the reasons why you want to use raise dead a bomb limb Remorseless Winter and Death and Decay before you use Pillar of Frost is because during Pillar of Frost the only three moves you want to be using is Obliterate when you have a Killing Machine proc and if you don't have a Killing Machine proc what you're going to do is Howling Blast if you have a Rhyme proc and if you don't have a Rhyme proc you're just going to Frost Strike and Howling Blast and Frost Strike is going to make your next Obliterate automatically crit with magic damage by activating a killing machine proc and you're just going to keep doing that over and over again so you're going to have remorseless up death and decay down you're going to put out your uh, pillar of frost you're going to use your chill streak and then you're just going to obliterate howling blast obliterate howling blast obliterate frost strike obliterate You'll have these goes pretty often because Pillar of Frost is a really short cooldown with it being reduced with this ability right over here where every time you get a critical strike it reduces it by 2 seconds of Frost Strike and Obliterate. So your goes happen basically every 45 seconds which is really nice because that's in between defensive cooldowns usually and things like trinkets. Here's a look of everything in action all at once. Summon Pet, A-Bomb Limb, put down Death and Decay, Remorseless Winter, use Pillar Frost into Chill Streak, Howling Blast for Killing Machine proc, use Obliterate with the Killing Machine proc, use Frost Strike to get another one, use Howling Blast to get another one, 
use the killing machine proc, use frost strike, use killing machine proc. You put down another death and decay, killing machine. Use your howling blast proc. And just hit a lot of obliterates while your death and decay is down and you're going to be doing huge damage. As you can see down here, 100,000 just on these dummies right here. Frost is great at putting out immense AoE pressure during their very short cooldown. Alright, now for Frost DK's defenses. DK's have some of the best defenses in game with Anti-Magic Shell, Lichborn, Icebound Fortitude, as well as just simply kiting the enemy with Chains of Ice and Death and Decay. Our Anti-Magic Shell, which is our bread and butter, is a low cooldown, huge defensive ability that stops all magic damage and crowd control effects as well as prevents magic dots from being applied to you. This is a great spell to combine with Lichborn to further increase how much it will absorb on you, making it even harder to pop and making you that much more tanky during times of great burst, like a ret using his wings. Lichborn with the build we're going today is an incredible tool to have to decrease all the damage taken from magic and physical by 15% for 12 seconds, which is a really long defense to have, not only that, but if you're not being trained you can also use it to break out of fears to help your teammates by being the snare god you are as a frost death knight. Alright, and now to Icebound Fortitude. It gets you out of any sun and makes you immune to them for the next 8 seconds as well as reduces all damage on you by 30%. And now since Icebound is your way to get out of stuns, you won't want to use this purely for the damage reduction in most situations. You want to save this for a huge stun. And mostly in solo shuffles, that's going to be the first stun right off the bat when everyone blows their huge cooldowns on you. You can also combine this with Anti-Magic Shell. It will be close to unkillable when it comes to magic damage. And now when it comes to Death's Advance, this is a fantastic defensive tool. It's a speed increase as well as an immunity to pull and push mechanics like another Death Knight's Death Grip or an Ellie Shaman's Thunderstorm. So when trying to get away, you can use Chains of Ice paired with Death's Advance to easily make big gaps. When it comes to crowd control, as a Frost DK, I always recommend before bursting to grip in the healer into an asphyxiate and then putting your death and decay on everyone for a 90% slow and then starting the burst rotation I have noted in chapter 6. One of our main crowd control abilities is going to be asphyxiate. It's great to use before or after burst to create pressure. If a class is disarming you during your burst, you can also save this stun for him to protect your burst as both asphyxiate and your pillar frost are going to be around similar cooldowns. For death grip, you're going to want to use this as a ranged interrupt on the healer to get him out of a safe area so he's not just spamming heals. Combine a grip on the healer with the chains of ice to create further pressure and make him even more uncomfortable in the situation he's in. Now when it comes to mind freeze, you have a 15 yard range on this kick so you can catch healers off guard very easily with this especially since you're gripping them often into a chains of ice, putting them in very hard locations to cast while in front of you. Another one of your strong crack control effects is going to be Abomination Limb. This can be used after gripping in a healer to make sure he's gripped in a second time to extend the pressure and put him further away from where he wants to be. Now for Chains of Ice, it's one of your strongest slows as well as you can apply two of them at the same time. So you're always going to want to keep your main targeted chains the entire game as it also reduces their haste by 8% and gets refreshed by Frost Strike. So you can have up Chains of Ice on some players forever, especially players like Shadow Priests and Ellie Shamans, where their only way to get out of it is using a Fade or getting a Freedom from a Paladin. Now when it comes to Death and Decay, it's not only a strong tool to do burst because your Obliterate will be able to hit two targets, but it's also going to be an extremely strong crowd control tool when it comes to using this talent tree because it's going to be a 90% AOE slow so you'll be able to put this on top of a team of three people that you've gripped in and slow them by a huge amount and since you have two death and decays you can do this very often. Alrighty guys if you enjoyed this guide and had any questions I stream over on twitch.tv slash jokes tv daily from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. eastern if this guide helped you in any way, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. It helps greatly. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you over on Twitch.